Hey, North Star, welcome to another episode of Digging Deeper, where we help you lock eyes with Jesus and take a step towards Him. Today, we're going to read a good portion of Genesis chapter 3 as we look at the consequences of Adam and Eve's sin and the effects it still has on us today. So Genesis chapter 3, starting in verse 13, God's word says this. So the Lord God asked the woman, what have you done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are more cursed than any livestock and more than any wild animal. You will move on your belly and eat dust all the days of your life. I will put hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. He said to the woman, I will intensify your labor pains. You will bear children with painful effort. Your desire will be for your husband, yet he will rule over you. And he said to the man, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, do not eat from it. The ground is cursed because of you. You will eat from it by means of painful labor all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. You will eat bread by the sweat of your brow until you return to the ground, since you were taken from it. For you are dust, and you will return to dust. It's at the rebellion of Adam and Eve that we see the shattering of shalom, of God's divine intention, his peace, what he intended for us, what he intended for our world. And it's when Adam and Eve went their own way instead of going God's way that all of the cosmos got off the proverbial train tracks. And now this shattering of shalom reaches into the crevices of our everyday lives. I think think we can really break down this shattering into four different categories. Um, The first we see in Genesis 3.8, and it's the shattering of our relationship with God, um, that human beings were created to be in right relationship with God forever. But because of sin and shame, as man opposes God, not as an ally, but as an enemy, And our relationship with God is fractured because of our selfish sin, that that is shattered. But secondly, we see in Genesis 3, 7 is that we were meant to have a perfect relationship with ourselves, that instead of being fully conscious of God, we are now self-conscious, that we look at ourselves and experience shame, that our lives are warped by insecurity and our desires to compensate for what we feel is lacking. Our relationship with ourself is shattered. But third, we see in Genesis 3, 12 and verse 16 that our relationship with others is shattered, that we were created for relationship, that we were designed to be co-laborers, but now we see others as competitors, that all of the relationships in our lives are marked by strife, effort, and in many situations, unimaginable pain. And then fourth, and maybe one we don't think about as much, is our relationship with nature. And we see this in Genesis 3, 17 through 21, that that Adam and Eve's role was to tend to this good garden that God had given them. But now the ground is cursed and eating from it will be laborious work for all people. So just today, would you please just take a look at your life? Uh, Do you experience the shattering of shalom in these places? Is it your relationship with God? Uh, Is it your relationship with yourself and the insecurity that you feel? Is it your relationships with those around you? Or even, goodness, is it the toilsome work of your job? Um, Is it the the struggles of just the nature that is around us? Um, Because what we find is that sin does not just affect spiritual things, but it affects everything. John Tyson says it this way. He says, there is a sin tax for living on planet earth, uh, which means that things will take longer, cost more, require more effort, and burn more energy. Quite simply, life is hard. Things are broken. Yet we are not without hope. You were created for the shalom of God in all things. And thankfully, our faithful covenant-keeping God will bring shalom back for us once and for all. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for your word. And Lord, as we just acknowledge today that shalom has been shattered by our sin, um, God, we look to you 
as the one who will bring shalom back, that you will restore what was broken, that we will be in right relationship with you, with ourselves, with others, and with nature once and for all. And Father, we pray these things today through your Son and by your Spirit. Amen. Amen.